This wasn't behind closed doors. This was a public, solemn commitment that if we instituted an income tax, all the money would not go to Columbus and then be doled out by Columbus for their budgetary priorities. It would be shared with local communities through the local, local government fund. Now, Senate President Faber mentioned the budgetary uh, challenges that the state was facing in 2011, and I understand that because we were facing it too. So lots of communities had to make tough decisions back in 2011, but I don't know of any of them except for the state that solved them in large part by passing the bill down to local communities. And I just don't believe that that was right because I don't think they were entitled to that money. I think that that money, that there was a commitment that was made that that money should be spent on the local level. And I think that the cuts that resulted from that, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, have sometimes been described and characterized as a minor inconvenience to local government. You know, I, I have, not just my county, where I looked people in the eye that had to be laid off, they didn't find it to be a minor inconvenience. But in the last year or so, I've been in every single county in Ohio, and I've talked to firefighters and sheriff's deputies and police officers who've been laid off. They didn't find it to be a minor inconvenience. And I've talked to township trustees whose budgets took hits that maybe some people wouldn't be impressed with the numbers uh, because they're not millions of dollars, but for that township budget, it was a very big deal. And it affected people uh, in a very real way. Now, what have I learned in terms of being a county official, in terms of what, what should be the role between different branches of government? And, and I do, I agree with some things that uh, Senator Faber said about encouraging sharing of services. That can be done. And I'll, I'll just give you a couple examples of what we've tried to do in my county to try to make things not tougher on local government, not balancing our county budget at the expense of local communities, but actually trying to be helpful to local communities. So, for instance, our county government started to provide IT services for local communities for the first time. So we've now signed up about 11 communities just in my county where the county is now the provider of IT services so that the individual township or city doesn't have to provide those services on, the, on their own. They can contract with us for those services at a lower than market rate. We're starting to provide health insurance benefits uh, where we do all of the administrative, uh, administrative function, functions and the third party administration and we do that through the county if a city or township wants to contract with us. Uh, we're doing things like uh, basic road repair, which we hadn't done for some cities, and now we're willing to do that if they'll contract with us. And that's, not, that's, that's just a partial list. We're doing things like uh, human resources uh, training and services for small communities. Because as you know, just because a community is smaller doesn't mean that an IT issue or a human services issue or a human resources issue isn't just as complicated as a big community is going to face. 